The ship is arriving late, but the port has made all the necessary preparations, clearing paths for the containers and opening streets and bridges. In this smart network port, everything flows smoothly without interruption. At least that's the idea. Naja. This is a normal Friday. Everything's crowded because so many trucks arrive at the same time, especially the long haulers. The Danes, too. Everybody gets here at once. Trucker Victor Gable doesn't get upset over the traffic congestion anymore. He sees it every day. He's been hauling containers from the port of Hamburg to customers and back for a good 11 years. He used to receive his instructions by radio. Today, he uses a tablet. Dispatcher Christian Ruhl sends him all the information he needs. From headquarters, Ruhl keeps track of all the transport company's drivers with the new system called Smart Port Logistics. This system has made us far more efficient. We can see where the vehicles are and take action in advance. We know when the truck is approaching the terminal and send the data beforehand without his having to stop. He doesn't have to talk to me over the radio either. He can keep working without interruption. The pilot project has been going for three years. Now Gable makes eight runs a day instead of six and a half. These improvements aren't limited to communication. The software can flag construction sites and impassable bridges. The project manager from the SAP Software Corporation is well aware that networking can only work if everyone in the terminal takes part. We have no access to confidential data, to billing information or customer data. But I'll agree that we do need this basic willingness to open up to it, if only to the point they themselves regard as acceptable and practical given their business conditions. As a rule, we need this willingness. Victor Gable's boss can easily see that he's a bit late, but Gable still doesn't feel like he's being watched. Although the entire port has access to his data, his identity is kept anonymous. One problem that hasn't improved in the terminal is the traffic congestion. I don't think the infrastructure here in the port is good. Forget it. The port is simply too small. And what have they done with the streets? Nothing. New streets are expensive. It's more cost-effective for the port operator, Jens Meyer, to lobby for more digitalization as often as he can. Besides, this port is situated in the middle of Hamburg. There's hardly room for expansion. So he'd rather invest in closed-circuit cameras and new software. Even in a port, networking has its risks. The port of Antwerp, for instance, has been attacked by hackers. The danger is that someone could manipulate data or even bring down whole systems. We used to have fax bombs, where somebody would send loads of traffic to one fax machine and put it out of commission. Similar attacks also take place nowadays on IT systems, but I believe we've got components built into our software architecture that make it relatively hard to attack us effectively. Just 15 kilometers later, Victor Gable has reached the client and makes his delivery. He gets his next destination from his boss. It's a disadvantage if the signal's bad. It can take longer. Soon, the system will even be able to work out alternative routes. To never get stuck in another traffic jam, that would be a trucker's dream. <laughs>